This is Hacking the Afterlife podcast with Jennifer Schaefer. Hello, Jennifer. Hello, Richard. How are you, Hi. darling? May Fabulous. I say you look quite fetching today. Fetching? Well, I did get my hair cut. Oh, my is that hair. what happened? Oh, completely different. Wow, it's amazing. Very cool. And you're in your office today, which is a good place to be. If you're trying mm-hmm. to find Jennifer in Manhattan Beach, right? It's so fun. I have so many great clients, and I just am so excited that they come you know, you get to purchase a, you get to have wine for free with your purchase of an hour with me <laughs> or even 45 Is that true minutes. in your office? I thought that was only at the public events. No, I bring a bottle of wine for people that have <laughs> an hour with me. That was always part of it. And oh so my God, people, that's so cool. Women have, like they gather their girlfriends and they split it up. They, you know, they all split up the price and they get an hour and we just go through everything. It's super fun. Wow, what a clever idea. Wow. I really really like the end of my work. Yeah, you can have up to seven people in my office for an hour. Wow, that sounds like a party. No one else does that. No one else does that. (laughs) Um, All right, so here we are with our podcast. We're two years in, um, and somebody sent me a link today to their podcast, and they're like, we have 280,000 subscribers, and we want to include you. I'm thinking, 280,000, you don't need me. Um, but yeah, we should have 280. I don't know why we don't. Who knows? We just haven't, but let's go back to how many people look at Cora, sweetheart. Well, we have 37 million views of our Hacking the Afterlife website, so they don't subscribe. They're not clickers. Not clickers. (laughs) Maybe. I don't know. You know, Jennifer, part of it is, and for the people tuning in for the first time or the last. last, there you go. Um, you know, doing this work, talking to people on the other side, I mean, we're so lucky that Jennifer gives us the time to do this. But if, if I feel like if I go out and try to promote it and try to get subscribers, it just feels weird to me because it's not for everybody. People are finding it no matter what. So it doesn't. Despite themselves. And, you know. And I get great feedback from it and it's helped a lot of people. And that's why we keep doing it. That's true. And also, occasionally, somebody will tell me that they had a dream. Mm -hmm. uh, And in the dream, their loved one on the other side said, hold up, held up one, said they held up a martini glass and said, and the person was like, what do you want me to start drinking martinis? And then this person on the flip side, Ken Russell, the famous film director, said to his wife, no, look the guy up. Oh, wow. And now she's a subscriber here as well as on Quora. And because the husband, who I've never met, I don't know him. I mean, I've seen his movies. But, you know, there he was on the flip side saying, look these people up because this is how you communicate with us. It's happened uh, when my clients, uh, Pamela, uh, from this week, she said, she goes, I got a visitation that said to call Jennifer you know exactly and then of course you're in your phone book going jennifer 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 who's that jennifer or she's like i knew exactly who she, i knew exactly who i was supposed to contact which is great yeah. all right so luana our friend on the flip side who um left back in 1996 and and you know has been showing up more often than when she was here um jennifer thank uh, and thanks for putting me and jennifer together and jennifer and luana write the forward together to the book backstage pass to the flip side that's her name l-u-a-n-a luana oh, yeah. enders so luana our moderator on the flip side who does the same kind of thing that jennifer does um what do you want to tell us today who's here to see us and talk to us they're putting a picture of me in my head so let me figure okay. that out somebody that might have shown up in your mind recently right they want to talk about me and what we will be doing um it's interesting because i've asked the question like in different ways because i've been asked to do a lot of different things with tv and the internet and whatever and it's challenging to get things for ourselves and i think that's what they're actually trying to suggest that it's challenge i think that's where they're going with it so hold on not necessarily telling me i should do this or i should do that hold on so and just to clarify there's some opportunities that have arisen and they're putting them in your mind 
And it's the yeah. idea of, I mean, I just asked Jennifer where a missing film was that I couldn't find in my office. And she said, oh, it's over there above the thing. And of course, that's where it will be. But, you know, that's the luxury of having somebody like Jennifer asking them, where did I put my keys? But that's because I don't have an attachment to it. And I think that's what they're getting at. Um, you know, it's easy to find. Yesterday, I worked on something where I was looking for, I was helping somebody out with the, a relative that went missing. It, well, it's easier for me to look than it is for the person that's, you know, that's, yeah. that's the relative. Because they're just, they're, they have, there's so many emotions and their worst fears come in. And, and that when you have fear, you can't really get the right insight, if that makes sense. Totally you, makes sense. You might think that you're wrong because how many, I mean, you know, I just saw Jack at the top of the Mammoth Mountain, you know, I felt him being safe, but who am I to think that way when two ski teams get deployed and he's nowhere to be found? And of course he was safe, but we didn't find that out till later. He just skied home and decided not to get his shoes or anything that was left at the bottom of the mountain. Like, when did just, this happen? Well, this happened a couple of years ago. But a couple of years ago. Scared, the crap out of me, and I end up calling Lisa Williams, saying, "Lisa, I'm like, yes or no. We play that game, yes or no, because if she has an attachment to it, then she might get the information yeah. screwed." And so, skewy. And so, she said, "There's something really big going on, but I feel like whatever it is, it's going to be okay. Now, tell me what it is." And I told her, and she's like, "Oh my gosh, okay, I'll figure it out, you know." But it's okay. So let me go back. Hold on. Hmm. She's like, what we want to discuss is trusting yourself, but also trusting yourself for not having an answer. You in other know? words, whatever the outcome is going to be, they might be working on it upstairs, and we're down here working on it as well. Waste time vacillating over it. She and thank you. She's like, you do everything. Like every day, I'm doing something towards whatever it is. It's going to be out there later on. I have been for years, just like you have been. We show up every week. You know, hey, one o'clock, two o'clock, what time? <laughs> yeah, this morning. Am I going to see you? And I was in a production meeting. And and then, which I meant to tell you, I meant to beat you to it because you're the one that asked me, but I meant to beat you to it because I have it because I have to have you, in, you know, figured out before my whole day. Anyway, um, they're saying, okay, go back. Hold on. You spend so much time trying to make things happen when. Like you said, vacillating back and forth. Right. When that time not only gets, oh, that's so interesting. They're showing me like things going cross-sided, like the, the flares going like the, you know, electrons and neurons, whatever you want to call like it. Like a firework, you mean? Going yeah. against each other? Like they're canceling each other out because if you go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, let them do it. But do oh, something every day. I see. So it's like trust in the process. It'll be okay. Focus on the things that you love and that you want to do, and then something will fall its way. Is that right? Elvis. Is that correct? Right. Correct. Elvis just showed up. Hold on. Elvis. Now that's funny because I was literally in my car and he showed up on the radio and I thought, Joe, I wonder if he wants to talk to us today. What does Elvis want to say? <laughs> that's exactly an example of what this is. Hold on. That's so funny, though. Um, that's clever. He said he played music no matter what. He just did what he wanted to do. He got criticized like crazy for it too. He goes, but eventually I was doing what I was supposed to be doing. And he goes, and then I was also doing things I wasn't supposed to be doing, but that was later on. <laughs> so uh, that's interesting. And I, you know, literally uh, like uh, 20 minutes ago, you know, his name popped up on the car and, uh, and I was thinking to myself, I wonder what he's up to or what he's doing. Well, there is somebody in our class that I thought Luana might want to bring forward today. And it's let's a, just see if, sorry? Is it somebody's birthday? That's correct. Somebody's birthday. And this person showed up last week and just had one little sentence to pop in. And I kind of went back to our conversation. So Luana, do you want to present? This person whose birthday? Friends? No, yeah. you start with a but. I don't know. I'm you not showed even. up last week. Not, I'm you remember? You don't remember? I don't remember no. anything? His first name. I'll I'll give you a letter. I don't tell you what anything. What? Go ahead. Just tell me his name. Is that what yeah, you said? Tell me his name. <laughs> Bill. Bill. 
Paxton. Okay, very good. I mean, we do have a lot of bills. I have other bills in my I bills to pay. I'm just like I'm not going to play the game. <laughs> yeah, I know. No, I but he did because once you said that they did show up last week, then I'm going for conscious information. Yeah. For and then I get in my head and I can't get information. That's another. No, thing. we were talking about Loana's another... birthday last week. Right. And so he he came in with a little note, which was just about you know talking about your loved ones on the flip side. So. Okay, Bill, what do you want to say? People are talking about you today because, of course, they're remembering your birthday. And please, what do you want to tell people who are fans of yours or non-fans? What do you you want to tell them? Thank you. For what? You said you actually sung happy birthday to him. Did you actually sing happy birthday to him like Comet or something? I have nothing better to do at home than sing happy birthday to Bill Paxton. I swear to God. Yes, that's what I was doing that this morning. Uh, but I was also laughing because our relationship, we've talked about he this. Showed me, he showed me laughing, but he also showed me, he's like, tell, he's like, tell him thank you for singing it out loud to me. So, I mean, uh, just for, uh, look, I, I met Bill and just so people don't think I'm out of my mind, I did meet Bill back in the 19, uh, late after the movie Ishtar, I was coming back from London and I met him in London. And uh, we became pals through a mutual friend and we hung out and he actually rewrote a screenplay that I was going to direct and he was going to star in it. But his agent talked him out of it, which is her name popped into my head this morning. I hadn't thought about her since that day when she he said, my agent won't let me do it. Hildy. Anyway, and so we stayed friends, but he his career rocketed, as everybody knows. Everybody loves Bill. We love Bill. And. I, you know, I hadn't seen him in a number of years. I talked to him on the phone, but all these wonderful things that he did with his life and his career. And, you know, I, and there's a film called Talking to Bill Paxton, which is on Gaia. Jennifer's in it as a couple of other mediums because I asked them all the same questions. Where did we meet? How did we meet? What were you doing when we met? And they were all accurate. So I just want to mention there's a film that your son is in, which is so fantastic. Uh, James, that is was written by the mother of the guy who directed your first film, uh, Adam Rifkin. His mother wrote a script like 30 years ago. And I'm just going to mention a couple of names. So at that time, Lindsay Anderson was going to direct it. That's the guy who directed If and other Malcolm McDowell movies. Very familiar with his work. He Malcolm McDowell, who I met, told me that he sub silently directed him on clockwork orange because he kubrick wouldn't say anything so he would call lindsay and go what do i do with this anyways so adam rifkin who directed bill in his first film is now directing his son playing the part that adam's mother wrote for bill and it's starring malcolm mcdowell uh mary steenburgen who luana knew because they were in a movie called going south together so bill the floor is yours what do you want to say about that he says, I can feel all the love from everyone. He's just showing me like these little bubbles that come up. He's like, that's your job to make us feel good on our birthdays or anniversaries, but to celebrate, not feel sad. Again, they go back into celebrating. Um, we do our best to help you feel better or make coincidences happen that make you forget the sad parts. So that's what he did by putting that agent. You thought about that versus being sad that he's off the planet yeah, right? and, and all the people who are posting about him today uh really it's okay. unusual because they're they're so glad to talk about him talk about you know they're quoting you they've got memes of you doing lines or different movies i mean it's all over the oh, internet but i, I know, have not looked at it <laughs> you haven't seen it but i just happened to know somebody sent me a link this morning and i just happened to watch some really funny great stuff and it's great that they're not dealing with from a sad level they're like oh my god this guy listen to what he said in this movie that's what he's saying nostalgia like my dad came up and he's like nostalgia that's nostalgia and just for people who aren't aware of it jennifer's dad came through to talk about grief and we asked him for a, like some kind of a formula and he said grief is mostly sad memories nostalgia has both sad and happy memories when you can move grief to nostalgia, you begin the healing process. 
And so it, to, today is a day for a lot of people of nostalgia for Bill. Of course, you right. know, the pandemic took so many friends and, you know, people we know. And so you start to think about it from that aspect of like, what happened? You know, how did this happen? And right. it becomes less of trauma and more like the the cycle of life kind of stuff. But Bill, what else do you want to talk about, brother? He's like, that's it. I'm glad you got it. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, he said he brought out the sunshine, which I, that's finally we have sunshine. <laughs> How do you do that, Bill? He just took Twister with all the clouds. taking. Oh, yeah, out. just twisted them up. You twisted. know, you, when we first talked to you, and Jennifer didn't know who we were talking to, mm -hmm. I asked if you had anything to tell people on the back over here on stage, and you said, tell them I could fly. So now tell us, how do you fly? What does that mean? I can fly. He says, you can do it however you want. You can fly like Peter Pan or in a Merkaba or in a car that you design, like the one that's going around with Tom Petty, I think. He just showed me like the car that's going around, uh, the you know, like the Tesla that has Tom Petty. Oh, 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 no. No, that's a David Bowie song. David that they, Bowie. they fired Sorry. a Tesla into deep space and got yeah, it. Whatever that song is. So, okay. so that's a form of flying. So, just describe it. Give us a one, two, three, Bill. How do you how do you lift off? I say Tom Petty, but I did see David Bowie. That's great. <laughs> but okay, so Billy, tell us how you fly. Well, how do you do that? Oh, the same way you do when you meditate. Okay. He's like, you leave behind. Hold on. Okay, tell me again. You got to get closer. I know. When you think of something else or your mind goes into a meditative state, you're able to fly into a different place. Like your body becomes lighter. So... Okay. And he's just showing me, like, for instance, like when you're driving and sometimes you zone out and all of a sudden you grab the steering wheel, like, because you built yourself a little bit to make sure that you're like, wait, you know, maybe you weren't feeling the steering wheel. Yeah. And for instance, like when I do this work, when I'm done, I can't feel my feet. Like my body has been gone. I've been gone. Like I have this aura ring. And yes, there's some calculations with the aura ring that are not correct because this actually thinks they think you're working out if you're moving your hands, which I do when I work. But it says that I'm in that delta theta state. It says that I'm in that state because I'm. It's just a different thing. It's a different way. Of, so you're in you're in a, a altered state, and it's not Oklahoma, but you're in an altered state where you're able to uh, sort of experienced um and we've talked about this quite a bit with people on the flip side so and we asked bill like what would be something that you would create what's a what's a location that you create i mean at the time you told us it was like a sandy beach he just water. showed me the same okay he showed me the same thing again I was okay, just about describe it. he showed me two palm trees he's holding on one there's a hammock hold it there's a hammock in between okay and he's watching the sunset Wow, and, and so and there's, it's a sandy beach. And would there, if if I was going to look this up online, I mean, would there be a location, or is this completely Maui, Hawaii? Hawaii, Maui, Hawaii. And is it a place you had been to before? Or is this your construction? Or the Caribbean? It could be any anything. Um, yeah. But where does it come from in your mind? Anywhere. It could come from a movie. It doesn't matter. He says. And so then, so then you can you can take people there. Is that correct? Because we do have a higher self. Mm -hmm. So describe that process. So, for example, let's pretend that today when I was in my kitchen, I had an experience of hearing your voice and you saying, let's go. Come on, let's travel. And let's pretend that I suddenly was on this beach with you this morning. Mm -hmm. How'd you do that? So what are you saying to me? It's like, first of all, we don't have Zoom meetings. We meet wherever we want to meet. He goes, meet where you feel safe, where you feel comfortable, where you feel like it's heaven, where you like put the smells in it, put the salt water, put the whatever it is, this, the, the <laughs> stop. 
the sand between your toes. I just started laughing because I could smell the sand, you know, um, and he made fun of me, but whatever. So by doing that, putting those feelings, like you can put yourself there in two seconds flat if you, you add the feelings to it. And so then, in other words, the, the sense, the sensory perceptions of salt water and sand, sunshine, the sound of the waves lapping, the <laughs> hammock. Yeah, and he said to do that, in, and the sweatiness. You know, you can smell the sunscreen mixed in with the salt from the sweat. Okay, sure. But like coconut he, butter. He said, oh, "I like that too." He said to do it before you go to bed. So they reminded me because I asked my dad, "I'm like, Dad, come meet me tonight." I asked him that a couple of nights ago, and um, I don't remember I my dream, but, but I, yeah. I felt him there. But they're saying to do it before you go to sleep. Go meet him at that place if you can. If you can quiet your mind, he goes, that's the best way to sleep. So, and it is identical to a meditation, you know, a meditative state in this latest book. Waterfalls. Waterfall. Mm -hmm. In this latest book, Divine Counsels in the Afterlife, I came upon a really simple guided meditation. And I asked everybody, people I've never met before, to go there and just picture yourself in a boat on a river. You, You can hear the Beatles singing it. But it's so simple, and everybody can do it. And mm-hmm. oh, by the way, I also did it with Bard. Okay, let me ask you this question, yeah. Bill. You're probably not aware. Uh, he'll, he'll know I'm talking about. So, Bill, I, you're probably not aware of this conversation I had with Bard the other day, B-A-R-D. Okay. Let me ask you, are you aware of it? Yes. And so I want to ask you, Jennifer's not. So I'm just going to ask you some yes or no questions. I did a guided meditation with Bard. Was that accurate or did, was that just made up? I felt it going in and out. In and out. So Bard had this experience that I was doing, and eventually we went to visit Bard's council. Okay. So was that accurate or was it like what he percentage? Me, he was showing me like big stones like in the sea, like going to visit the council. Somehow. Like the council in the, the whatever that island, Easter Island, where those huge... Moana's, I think they're called something. So you're saying like a council, correct? Okay. And so I went to visit this council with this fella Bard. And there was somebody else that showed up there. That's true. It was Bard's guide. Okay. Now, but uh, Billy, it's very Billy important. Just show, Billy's just showing you that he was there because that's what he. That's why. So he, he, he was there, Bill or the guide. No, the guide was there, but Billy showed me that he was also. So he, let me ask you, Bill, how can Bard have, how does, how is it possible that Bard has a guide? That's my question. Jennifer doesn't have to know the answer. Please don't try to think about what I'm saying. Just let him answer it. How does Bard have a guide? Is the guide a, a, a being or an entity? Everyone has guides, even animals. Okay. And so, but this bard's a little bit more unusual than either one of those but the reason i ask is because so so uh, i i know it's a weird question but bill because jennifer doesn't know (laughs) what we're talking about you're saying that bard has a guide that is not bard is somebody else yes is that right okay listen it's mind bending but um what, no okay, point. this is what let me explain to you what it feels like to me. Please it go ahead. Like Bard, Bard has a guide, but it doesn't mean it's from this lifetime or this timeline or something like that. Like it's from a different lifetime. Like it's a different. So it's a guide that's been. Just give me a second. Hold on. Yes. He wanted me to call him birthday boy, which was funny. Birthday boy. <laughs> it's the appropriate term. I know, but it was just funny the way that he. Okay, just go back. No, I mean, not go back there. I know. He's like, we haven't talked in a long time. I'm like, but not really talked. And so he's making fun of me like he used to, and I'm not used to it. <laughs> it's okay. And Bill, this is if whatever you want to talk about, my friend. It's your floor. You want to skip Bard? We can move on to another piece of conversation here. Oh, he has a futuristic guide or entity. Bard has a futuristic guide or entity. Okay. 
and, and you know for us to delve into this and get into it it's like getting into the weeds it's so philosophical and so beyond measure all i can say is that it was an interesting do, but let me ask you bill do you did you appreciate the conversation i had with this bard fellow he says it was very expansive 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 very expansive it was very expansive anyway i won't go i won't go into those weeds it's on my website it's on my blog page richmartini.com but Bill, back to you, my friend. People are your fans out there. They want to hear what you're doing, bro. Are you making movies? Are you singing songs? You had the band Martini Ranch. He says he's redoing Caddyshack. He's, <laughs> he's redoing. Well, you know, he. I don't know if you know this, but he directed a movie about a golfer. What? Yeah, Bill directed a movie about a golfer. It was really terrific. He's doing that again. He's just making me feel Caddyshack, and he's doing something. He's golfing, and he's making a movie about golf, like redoing. So Caddyshack. let me ask you, Billy, because we can talk like this. Uh, how do you golf on the flip side? How does it work? <laughs> he says patience. You still have to have patience. I'm like, really? You have to have patience over there? It's funny. So do you create? Oh my gosh! And then he just showed me all of us he being here. He's like, patience. Have you seen you guys? <laughs> <laughs> but so, Bill, that. just describe how do you do it? Do you create the ball and the tee and the club and the swing? And then how do you do the trajectory? And, you know, go ahead. I feel like they're cheating. They're like tapping into Tiger Woods, like higher self. That's not cheating. That's cheating to me. I'm, I'm with Bill on this one. That's not cheating. That's just... That's using your talents to be able to tap into great athletes. Why not? So, what would be a, what? Would, is it always hold as in one, or is it, or is there more complexity to it? Way more. He actually showed me a ball splitting. Oh my gosh! Okay, so like hitting it and then letting it two different trajectories. Yeah. Wow. And so, in terms of storytelling, who do you play with? By the way. Do you want to show Jennifer? Do you play by your, by your lonesome or? He's playing with Jack Nicholson's higher self. And he says he's beating him every time. <laughs> well, Jennifer doesn't know this either. I spent an evening with in Paris with Jack Nicholson. And the entire evening, he went over hole by hole a, a golf game that he did at Pebble Beach. And for like, you know, two hours, he would say, okay. And so then I was on 12. And I took out... <laughs> I was looking at him like, seriously? But anyway, so there you go. That would make sense that Jack's higher self would be golfing. And he's losing all of his energy currency, apparently, his higher self is to Bill. Oh, that, that, oh, is that right? Is that what you guys play for? You play for like chits of energy or, I mean, is there a contest there? Something like that. Something like that. Very or good. Like types of already made food that was already like super yummy that they made. Like uh, oh, so the food might be a, a, a reward. He's like, you take a jelly belly, you know that how they put the popcorn and the flavored in the jelly belly. He's like, that's what we kind of trade for, but with food, like big amounts of food, like flavors, right? Flavors, mm -hmm. because of course, we're, you know, a, big it, amounts it, of experiences. That's it. That's it. Say that again, please. So, like, um, let me just make sure. It's a little tricky. I'm like, you go into somebody's memory? Is that what it is? He goes, no, we ask politely. Like, hey, I want to experience, you know, he's showing me London. I want to experience London. That's not, he's already experienced London. But if somebody else wanted to experience London but didn't do it here, they're able to go in and have fun with him and you and whatever else, one of his fun experiences. Your memories of, of yeah. Right, right the smell. Okay, of the yeah. But let me ask you, Bill, is there, a, is there a process to that? Do you have to go to the Akashic Library and pull out their memories? Or is it just the field is right there and you just pick and choose what you want to remember? You just, you just like touch the other person. And you get a full download of everything that they're, they know. Is that correct? He says we get a full download of what it is that I want to know. Oh, okay. That's interesting. All right. So these are off limits, I guess. Say again? Like, some things are off limits. Like he's like, I don't want to know about that person's ugly divorce. Why would I want that? Oh, I, I understand. Just, but I you just want to know why I just want to know about the car or the car crash or the whatever. 
or the ability to drive a car. So let's say you meet somebody who's a famous race car driver and you say, let's do a race and you download all the information they know about race car driving. And so you're going to be competitive. Bingo. Okay, very good. And but not the stuff that's like intimate that people are afraid that they're going to have to reveal to everybody in the universe. Right, right. No, no, no. He, that's where he's like, why? He goes, that's what you need to do as many things as you can do. He goes, get all these experiences. Wow. Good, bad, good, bad, and indifferent. People want to know on the other side. So when you get back there and you meet somebody, you can experience their journey. This like sort of, you know, as a spectator. Yeah, like they, people come to him and they want to experience going to the bottom of the sea. Very good. And, and when we I first met Jennifer and, and this friend, Bill, was in a bathosphere. He was like taking her down to visit the Titanic. And she, not knowing who he was or what was going on. I got scared. He showed me that shark. A shark came by and she suddenly jumped in the chair. And it was just, a, it's, a, it's on, it's in the film hacking. Yeah, like, but still. Uh, all right, so Bill, let's talk about that, going down to visit the Titanic. Have you met anybody that was on the Titanic since you've been on the flip side? Plenty. All the critics that tell me that I didn't do a good job. <laughs> uh, speaking of critics, have you met Ebert and Siskel? <laughs> He's like, for your sake, I'm going to say no. <laughs> for my sake. And, of course, that's because they gave me a thumbs way down on one of my films. Limit up. But because, they, we both, because maybe they don't have thumbs anymore. Maybe that was what they had to give they up. They don't have thumbs anymore. But you know what? It was great to get the apologies from both of them. Both of them apologized and said you were ahead of your time. Of course, they could have been kidding. Um, no, they weren't. Uh, they weren't. All right, so let's talk about uh, other people on the planet that miss you terribly. Jim Cameron. James Cameron. Great director. Mm -hmm. Your pal, your peep. What do you want to say to him? Okay, I think he has this more for me because I have some something that deals with anyway. He says, tell James to take care, take better care of his people. Um, I think that has to do with something else, but hold on. All right, uh, that's fine. He'll understand it. We won't. How about Adam Rifkin? So Adam Rifkin, oh, for... Uh, it's a film, he's a film director about to do this movie that he was going to do with Bill, but he's doing it with his son now. He's way too fast. Hold on. What about what's going way too fast? Way too fast. What does that mean? I don't know. Let me find I'm out. Sorry. Sorry. Way too fast. He says, he says I'm not only thrilled about my son um, being in it. He's so happy that they made it scenically, like the scenes in the movie, so well. Like I just saw Dead Poet Society, the, you know, the, I thought it was they won an award for the cinematography. So I don't know if this movie is going to have something like that, but he's just saying the scenes have been the scenes have been done really well. And I feel like the movie got produced pretty fast, even though it was a 30 year old script. Oh, I see. And it's also time. You only have so much time to make a movie. And when you're making a lower budget film, you, you have to everything has to be done. You know, that's the world I lived in. Bill I mean, got to live in. A, he sorry, put he put his hat down like. You know, he tipped he tipped his head like that's correct. So Bill, you know, fortunately was able to work on movies that took a long time to make. Whereas, you know, it would be like can't find, uh, can't find me love or can't can't what is it called again? The movie that you can't. you can't hurry love. He rewrote the script love. with me um, and he made says, it funny. He says you can't hurry love is still one of his favorites. <laughs> He's lying. Oh, He's mocking me. He's mocking me one once again. No, I appreciate that, Bill. Listen, it's uh, you nobody know, knows now. It's one of his favorites. Well, let he me put it this way: the fact time. the fact that I'm using your name like this in public, talking about you, would be offensive to so many people because they're looking at us saying. Are you serious? You're claiming you're talking to the Bill Paxton? Well, just because he likes to insult me. <laughs> so and he likes, don't forget, he likes to make fun of me too. He likes to make fun of both of us, which is really, if anybody knew Bill, they'd know that that is that was his fall to position, and that's what made him so charming, and you know why everybody fell in love with him because he could be self-deprecating. I just told him, I'm like, I just, I'm like, I do love you. As you were saying, everybody loves him. Everybody does love him. 
but he, but he just had just a great sense of humor um and and fun so are you planning but robin williams just showed up hold on somebody trying to steal your spotlight there bill he said he had a long enough really you're you're acceding to the maestro he says his birthday's next I don't know when that is, but but go ahead, Robin. What do you want to say? Listen, we always love hearing from you. Please go ahead. What do you want to tell us? When he first came up, he said, love, love, like what we discussed before, what he said at the end of one of your books. Um, but he's saying that love is that frequency. And he's reminding me that I was having a God conversation with somebody. And I said, they asked me what the, what I thought of God. And I said, I think God's very complex, something that we won't understand till much, much later over on the other side. But what I do feel is God is a frequency of love and that way we all make up that, you know, and I was talking, thank you. I was talking, they were showing me about my crime work. Like I had a shaman, you know, I don't know if we discussed this or not, but I had a shaman show me. He's like, you're not God. I'm like, I never claim to be. And they're like, he's like, then why do you judge? He goes, you judge the people that, you judge the things that are out there. I'm like, no, I don't. But if somebody gets murdered, yeah, I'm going to have a hard time dealing with the person that murdered them. And he's like, you can't judge them. There's an equalizer out there that you're not in charge of. And to be more efficient with what you do for work, get out of judgment, get out of fear, get out of judgment and do your work. And I sat there and I didn't know whether to be super offended or like, <laughs> but it made sense though. Was this somebody on the planet telling you this or somebody yes, off? No, on the planet telling me oh. this. Oh. And and it helped me because then I let go of the fact that I'm not in charge of that. I can have compassion for the people that have been hurt. Yes, absolutely. But not take it on and not be so devastated by the, you know, the person that we don't know how it gets, how things happen or how they get adjusted. You know, it's easier to say it's hell. Or they go to hell. Yeah. They go to their own private, you know, I believe all the energies go where the energies can go. So somebody that did all those things here, I might not be able to, I might, it won't be able to hang out with me in my energy field. Right. It's like you can go sit somewhere else, but still you can understand. I talk about this a lot on Quora. It's that idea of we can't know what somebody else is experiencing unless we stand literally in their shoes and look at all their previous lifetimes and examine all why did their teachers and guides and council members all say oh this will be an interesting play for you to be in how did they even get to that play so robin what do you what else do you want to talk about in terms of your observations of being god because <laughs> you are comedy god so fascinating he said if we all became the observers of things that happen then we'd get more detached and we probably wouldn't be doing the things that cause it because how many times do people get murdered it's over something that they thought they were wronged or or abused know. they abuse others because they were abused right so robin how are you helping people over there on the flip side are you still he says helping he's helping them not to come here so Helping them not so you, I, we've talked about this. Maybe. You seek out people, or or somehow you're attracted to that energy of someone who wants to leave the stage. Or right. He. I don't remember us talking about that, but it doesn't surprise me. Yeah. You see, we talked about that, but he said that he helps people. He talks people off the ledge. And so, what's a way to do that, Robin? What would be a way? I mean, you know, let's just say. Love. Go ahead. Love. Love. Giving love. them love. Telling them that there's this is temporary that they can get through it. Love, 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 love. And so, just to refresh everyone's memory, please, what does love, love mean? You said it to us some time ago, 2016, I think it was. What does love, that mean? Love, love means if you're in love with something like in love with the word love or what the, he says the feelings that are associated to love because when once you want more of that when you want to give it out to make other people happy he's like if you love every aspect of love he says then you can turn pain and sorrow into something that's beautiful and butterflies you just you can you can rearrange your thought process you can reorganize what you think is bad or good or indifferent 
um, my love is just, it's a, it's something so simple, but so complex and so complicated. Just love and live well, or, you know, I always say that when we get to the other side, they're going to ask us if we loved well, did you love well, or did you not give love because you were insecure? You know, or fear. I, yeah. or fear. I think we'd be held more accountable for that than if we loved and tried to love everyone. So, and just to tie this together between what Bill was saying and what Robin is saying, this idea of meditation or, I mean, med means measure in Latin. So you're measuring your thoughts. So you begin to create a place of love, let's say, whether it's a beach and a, you know, a hammock or some environment of love or examine things from a field of love. Is that, is that what you're talking about? Something like that? Examine the frequency of what love is for them because love mean love is different for everyone. And they just showed me Freddie. Freddie's love is by cooking, making sure that I'm fed, making sure that I'm taken care of because he doesn't think I would do it by myself. So that's his, you know, the love languages. It's different for everybody what love means. But by analyzing it and studying it, like you just said, study the frequencies of what makes you happy within love and then go do it and multiply it and triplicate it and whatever triplicate it that's really funny that's a good word um and you know people have a hard time with the first thing which is loving themselves because they're angry at themselves or don't have love with yourself then you're missing out on the universe because if you don't love yourself then you feel like you're not worthy of, of things and that makes the whole universe go into he's just showing me going in a back spiral he's like what if you knew that you are so loved by the other side. What would that look like for you? What if you could do no wrong? Don't go out and kill someone. Don't drink and drive. Like, come on. But what if you were able to see what they see, which is just, which is that never ending love. And so Robin, let me ask you this question, if I may. Uh, somebody reached out to my aunt Cora from India who was having a really hard time. And they were talking about not wanting to be on the planet. And I was telling them first, you know, go seek professional therapy. But second, this idea of love yourself and find love within yourself. Are you familiar with what I'm talking about, Robin? Do you know who this guy was? He said he helped him. He guided him to you because he needed extra help. Wow. So is he okay? He will be. He will be. All right. Well, that's all. That's take, all we can ask for. Take time. I have to go. I know. Jennifer has to go. All right. What fun. Bill, thank you so much for stopping by. Jim, we saw you briefly, but of course, we always love to hear from you. Robin, we love you dearly. You always make us smile, and we appreciate that. And Billy, you make us smile too. So <laughs> you get credit. And Happy I'm looking for a hole in one. Go Happy ahead. Birthday. Say again. Happy birthday, dear Bill. Happy birthday, Bill. Bill Happy birthday to you. <laughs> All right, very good. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you on the flip side. And love, love. Bye. Bye, bye. This has been Hacking the Afterlife podcast with Jennifer Schaefer. For more information, jenniferschaefer.com, martinizone.com, or richmartini.com. Hacking the Afterlife documentary is available on Gaia.com via Amazon Prime.